this video will present my favorite NFL picks against the spread for week 9. First, let me say it once more. The most money-making bets in the NFL are player proposition bets. Some people are still asking me what they are, so let me explain quickly. Such bets concern the performance of specific players. For example, over or under 4.5 receptions by a certain wide receiver, or over under 71.5 rushing yards for a given running back. In week 8, I presented 3 free picks on YouTube, and those plays generated a 1 and 2 record. However, once again, the premium picks shared at mjpicks.com crushed it in a big way. I added another bet against the spread, the Panthers plus half a point in the first quarter against the Texans that ended up winning. Then our bread and butter, the lucrative player prop bets, killed it again with a 7-1 record. You can view what those premium picks were on your screen. Believe it or not, the past 16 NFL prop bets have generated a mind-boggling 15-1 record. Talk about piling up some profits. Alright, let's dive into week 9 right away. Let me unveil several betting tips for this week. Pick number 1 goes to the New York Giants plus 3 points in Las Vegas. Buckle up because I've got a lot of arguments backing this pick. I like it a lot. I am shooting this video on Tuesday, but the latest reports indicate that Daniel Jones has been cleared for contact, which makes him very likely to suit up for this game. The other good news surrounding the New York football giants is that both starting tackles seem to have a good shot of being back on the field. Indeed, Andrew Thomas and Evan Neal were both limited participants for several practices last week, which bodes well for this week. New York's offensive line has been hit hard by injuries, but the unit has played better of late. And with the possible return of their starting tackles, I like their chances of improving even more. The Giants' defense is also turning the corner. They have allowed just 34 points over the past three games, which amounts to an average of 11 points per game. And that was despite facing the Buffalo Bills during this stretch. Meanwhile, the Raiders look like a team that's ready to give up. Devante Adams seems unhappy. They only lost by a 12-point margin against the Lions, but things could have been far worse if Detroit had not turned the ball over on three occasions. In reality, the Raiders were not in the game as they got demolished 486 total yards to just 157. Wow! Las Vegas is the only team that has failed to score over 21 points this season. Jimmy Garoppolo has thrown at least one interception in each of his six outings in 2023. He missed many passes last Monday, including a wide-open Davante Adams for what was an easy touchdown. As far as the running game is concerned, the Raiders are dead last in the NFL in yards per carry average. Granted, Josh Jacobs looked more decisive against Detroit, but their porous offensive line remains an issue. The icing on the cake is the fact that Vegas loses one day of rest and preparation after playing the Monday Nighter. Also remember how the Raiders got smashed 30-12 by the Lowly Bears the week before. They let Tyson Bajan look like a superstar. And now you are telling me that this fading team is a 3-point favorite? My gosh, this was an easy call for me. Give me the Giants to cover the 3-point spread in this one. Pick number 2 goes to the New Orleans Saints laying 7 points against the Chicago Bears. Earlier this season, Derek Carr dealt with numerous injuries. He is healthier now and his performances have also improved. 
Did you know that he has racked up more than 300 passing yards in each of his past three appearances? In his first four games, Carr tossed just two TD passes versus two interceptions. During his past four matches, he's had six TD passes compared to two picks. Carr also benefits from having a good supporting cast. He has three solid wide receivers with Chris Olave, Michael Thomas, and speedster Rashid Shahid, who is a good downfield threat. In the backfield, Alvin Kamara and Jamal Williams are a good duo to have. Incorporate Taysom Hill in the mix, the Swiss Army Knife, and you have an offense with good weapons. New Orleans defense is nothing to sneeze at either. They currently rank 9th in terms of points allowed per game, while they sit in 5th place in total yards surrendered per game. Compare that to Chicago's defense that is among the bottom 10 in both categories. The Bears' defense has no pass rush whatsoever, as they have picked up just 10 sacks this year, which is the lowest figure in the entire league. Rookie quarterback Tyson Bajan is a feel-good story, but he came back to earth last week. He showed good poise in the pocket, but he still struggled against the Chargers. Now playing in a tough road environment at the Caesars Superdome, I believe he will get eaten alive. To me, this is a walk in the park for the Saints, who I believe are an underrated team right now. Take advantage of the fact that they are flying under the radar while it lasts. I am betting the Saints to defeat the Bears by a margin of at least 7 points. I would not be surprised if they won by 20 points. What is my third NFL pick for week 9? I am grabbing the Washington Commanders as 3-point underdogs in New England. The Patriots rank 31st in points scored per game. Asking them to win by a margin of at least 4 points is no easy task. And it's not like they were facing the worst football team. Washington has shown some good things this season, especially QB Sam Howell, who is playing better than expected. Speaking of Howell, the numbers speak for themselves. In his first three games, he got three TDs versus five interceptions. But since then, he has accumulated 10 touchdowns and three picks. That's a much better ratio. That included a couple of games against the Eagles, who have a tough defensive front. Howell's most difficult games occurred mostly due to the lack of protection. However, his offensive line was much better last week against Philadelphia. You have all heard of New England's failures on the offensive side of the ball. One of the lone bright spots was wide receiver Kendrick Bourne, who was on pace for a breakout season. Unfortunately, he got hurt last week against Miami and he is done for the season. Bourne led the team in receptions and receiving yards by a wide margin. For example, he caught 37 balls, while the player in second place only grabbed 25, and it was running back Ramondre Stevenson. Bourne leaves a big void. New England has won just two games out of eight, and those couple of victories occurred by a margin of four and five points. To me, the chances of the Patriots winning by 4 points or more is clearly below 45%, so that's why I placed a wager on the Commanders plus 3 points. Here is a bet that I'm tempted to make but so far I have not pulled the trigger, so let's call it an unofficial pick. I could be convinced to bet the Dallas Cowboys plus 3 points in Philadelphia. Dak Prescott owns a perfect 3-0 record when facing Philly. In those games, Dallas has scored an average of 44 points. What? That's unbelievable. 
Prescott has obtained 11 TD passes versus just one interception in those divisional meetings. Jalen Hurts' knee does not look 100%. He was hobbling around and seems hesitant to take off. How will he handle the fierce pass rush from Dallas? The bye week seems to have been very beneficial for the Cowboys. Have they finally figured out how to get Dak Prescott going this year? He was almost flawless last week against the Rams. I am smelling an upset special, or at worst, the Cowboys might lose by a maximum of 3 points. This sounds like a viable bet to consider, in my humble opinion. I am tempted by a second unofficial betting play. The Miami Dolphins plus 2.5 points against the Chiefs in Frankfurt. Miami's offense looks unstoppable at times, while Kansas City only ranks 12th in terms of points scored per game. They are not playing to the level we expected them to be. This game will also feature Tyreek Hill's revenge game, as he will be facing his former team. The Cheetah is the first player in the Super Bowl era to top 1,000 yards through 8 games. If you double him, that leaves Jalen Waddle open, which is not necessarily better news for opposing defenses. However, there are two things that are bugging me. The Dolphins have faced just two teams with a winning record, and they lost both. Also, Patrick Mahomes has won its past eight games following a loss, so he knows how to rebound from poor performances. Still, if forced to bet, I would put my hard-earned money on Miami in this massive AFC matchup. A two quick announcements before I let you go. Let's all applaud Franco Laconetti for winning my NFL prediction contest for week 8. Way to go, man! Contact me via email at winner at professormj.com to redeem your $100 cash prize. Finally, let me remind you that my picks across all sports have generated 10 weeks with a winning record over the past 12. The player prop bets have been printing money for us. If you combine those types of bets across the NFL, the NBA and the NHL, we have collected 50 wins and 30 losses, a 63% winning percentage. Based on the odds from each bet, we gathered a plus 16.9% return on investment. Those premium picks, which are all backed by solid data, approved by a 15-year university statistics professor, are readily available for you at mjpicks.com. I provide an average of 35 to 40 picks across all sports per week, and it will turn out to be a sound investment for you. Stop missing out on huge gains, my friend. I'm looking forward to sending you the daily picks via email and SMS at mjpicks.com.